Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be talking about ransomware as a service, and more specifically, a variant called Unlock26. Joining the discussion is Sarah, who is a malware analyst at MCSoft. Hello. Hi there. Before we actually start talking about ransomware as a service, let's just go ahead and run this and see what we get. So this is the final compiled file that I'm running, but obviously it can be made in many different ways, as we'll see in a moment. It is pretty quick to encrypt our files, and it uses the locked extension. And I believe these three characters at the end are unique. Um, yes, that's correct. All right, so now we're going to have to, you know, go back to the previous version or I'll just have to grab a new version of the files because apparently it has encrypted itself and its uh, own setup guide, which I think is kind of funny. Yeah, some ransomware decides to encrypt .exe files for whatever reason. So how often do we see um, ransomware like this, which can be built very easily and customized? based on the requirements of the cyber criminals? Um, it's semi-common. Um, for example, Globe Ransomware has a builder where you can input a extension, a ransom note, what you want in the ransom note, um, extensions to encrypt, desktop wallpaper, and just kind of stuff like that. Well, this one doesn't give us a desktop background option yet, but I guess that's probably because this is still in development, so features might be added on later. Yeah, that's likely. Or it could just be that they like starting to test it out and then see how people um, kind of respond to it before adding more stuff. They actually measure the success rate or something and see if going ahead with this is a good idea. Yeah, I can I can see that being a possible reason. For example, if nobody's like really interested in, in in the product, then why would they bother adding more to it, I guess? So how do you think they actually create their business model? I mean, do they just charge people up front for the kit or do they take some share um, of every victim's payment? It kind of depends on the criminals themselves. For example, Cerber's a kind of ransomware as a service, so each um, like whenever they get a payment, um, they take the creators take a cut of it. But for some like selling ransomware, for example, Stampado, which is being sold on Tor, um, that's just thirty nine pounds for the ransomware. So you've got the affiliate types, you've got the pay upfront types, and uh, this is really a thriving business. Um, yeah, in some cases, yeah. You know that the server criminals have made a lot of money thousands in like just a month so it's obviously working out wow, for them. that's that's really crazy that's kind of sad yeah here's a funny feature that i find in a lot of these builders special decryption price for countries so basically for example some countries do not earn as much on average so um i guess if you want to take for example they usually give it discounts for asian countries and um mm -hmm. African countries because generally the average wage is not so much over there and also they do basically um, software kind of just the same thing where they offer special discounts for certain regions so it's not unique to so, like ransomware as such. <laughs> They're just doing general marketing tactics I mean just pricing yeah, things based on the consumer in this case the victims. Yeah for example you usually find that um, in some cases, they won't even affect certain countries because either they're not profitable or they don't want to get in trouble. Like, if you're Russian, you might not want to affect people in Russia because oh, then if the Russian <laughs> find you, you might then be you're found out. Yeah. So they try yes. to target countries where they're unlikely to be caught or, you know, they don't expect enough backfire. Well, if you're um, a Russian malware dev developer, which a lot of them tend to be, they know that if they infect other countries, Russians are unlikely to send them over to those other countries to like get them charged. So they know that they're more or less safer doing it that way. So looking at the ransomware builder we have over here, how sophisticated would you call this? It looks very simplistic to me, but then again, I'm not very familiar with these builders. Mm. 
it's not the like most amazingly complex ransomware that we've seen, but it's also not the worst by far. There's plenty of ransomware out there that are a lot less complex and just do very simplistic encryption and that's about it. So I would say it's probably not too bad, kind All of right. in the middle. I see. Well, how bad do you think is the encryption here? Is there a possibility that this um, could be broken? No, this one's secure. It uses um, CryptGen Random from like oh. the Windows APIs. So unless they messed up with using, with like generating the key, there was no chance. And in this case, they didn't. So it's secure, unfortunately. But I don't think we've seen many victims of this currently. So there is that. So where do you find all these kind of new builders and stuff? I guess there are specific websites where people can go and buy these things and start their own, you know, yeah. little gang business or whatever. So I guess hacker sites and forums, I guess that's where these things are posted. And what's the usual price? I mean, do you have any experience with the pricing? Like how expensive would you think getting into this business would be for a regular person? It kind of depends. In some cases, the price is very low, but that's generally for malware that's less sophisticated, offers less options. So I've seen about as low as $39. So that's the entry point. Yeah, but in that case, Stampado is not very sophisticated. It's very slow and it's also decryptable. So it's not the best place to start. I would say usually for a a bit a slightly better ransomware you'd probably expect around two hundred dollars but for the big campaigns like server to get into there you kind of have to be either recommended or you tend to have to have a lot of money like thousands of pounds usually yeah and i assume like the people who are really good at this they're going to keep their edge and they're not really going to sell for a very low price or expose their tactics yeah exactly it's quite interesting, all this insight you know, really goes to show how profitable and, uh, well, financially viable this business oh, yeah, model definitely. has become. And it's, it's pretty much a, a very easy thing to get into these days. Even if you have no programming knowledge, you could just pick up one of these builders or you could just grab some open source sample and then just make very minor edits, the kind of edits that pretty much anyone can do with basic education. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you've got the power to wreak havoc. So that's where this, uh, you know, double standard when it comes to security education really <laughs> is quite annoying. Because yeah. we do have people working at really high levels of government and a lot of different fields who know very little about this kind of thing. And then we have people with literally no knowledge just creating ransomware like this. Or being able to use it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's insane, like... I think I saw a Bitcoin wallet the other day that supposedly belonged to one of the um, Dharma criminals. So they're the people who like who have recently got their keys leaked, but only a certain variant. And it had about 200 um, BT um, Bitcoin tra like total transaction, and that's roughly like two two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it's actually insane how much money you can make. For all the viewers watching this, what would you recommend? What's your personal way of combating ransomware? I know, I mean, we all talk about backups and real-time protection, but what's your specific implementation of that? How do you recommend that people do their backups in anticipation? Okay, so in terms of backups, have multiple backups just in case one fails. For example, if you have one on a, um, a physical hard drive, Sometimes that hard drive can die. That happened on me. <laughs> yeah, for that, that's always it wasn't my a main risk machine. with spinning it was rust. The, the hard drive started failing, so we got went and got another one. But yeah, make sure you have multiple backups and test your backups regularly, because then you can find out. Oh, hey, this is not actually working, because I've seen cases where companies have had six backups, they all failed. Wow, <laughs> that's quite a lot. Yeah, it's basically just the same as not having any backups um i guess being aware and trying to like keep somewhat keep up to date on security news the pc security channel <laughs> insert ad here <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then usually like there'll be a thing saying oh this ransomware is spreading via this way beware 
is general security advice keeping your computer up to date, updates installed, run an antivirus, that kind of stuff. That should be common knowledge at this point. It should be, but you'd be surprised how many people and businesses, especially businesses, do not apply that knowledge. What's your view on cloud backups? Do you think that's a viable alternative for people? Definitely. If you if you're worried about cloud backups and people reading your stuff, which generally they don't, you can always encrypt your stuff before you put it into a cloud backup. Yeah. I mean, usually when That's a very you, important tip. Yeah. And usually you do try and say have at least one physical backup and have like a backup that's not like next to you or in your house. Quite often what happens is uh, people have their backup drives connected to the same network. Yeah, so when the that's... ransomware takes hold, it encrypts that too. So that's no good. Yes. Just connect your backup once you're done. Because otherwise... It's useless. If ransomware hits, it's completely... It's going to get infected. All right. So I guess that wraps up the video. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.